Hey everyone, it's Chica, and today I'm going to show you the different types of clay I use when I create my Altered Precious Moments figurines. In case you haven't been following along, I've been taking Precious Moments pieces and converting them into something new. Here's an example of one of my Altered Precious Moments where I took an original piece, added some clay up here, some paint, and turned it into something really new. Many of you have asked what kind of clay I use, and I actually use three different kinds, so I thought I would make this video to show you the different types of clay that I use, when I use different ones, and why, and how they work. I'll also share a lot of tips and techniques about how I work with the clay to get the results that I want for each piece. I use only air dry clay. I do not use polymer clay or anything that has to be baked because I'm afraid to put the figurines in the ovens. With a baked clay, you'd have to wait to paint everything at the end because you don't want to bake the paint. I prefer to do an air dry so that I can add clay throughout the process if I need it and paint in between too. So I like to stick with the air dry clay. In that range, I have three different clays that I use. The first one is Model Magic, Crayola Model Magic. It's very inexpensive, very lightweight craft clay. The second one is Sculpey Air Dry Clay. This is a affordable, heavy duty workhorse that I use for most of my stuff. And the third one is the Sculpey Air Dry Porcelain Edition. This one's a little bit different. It's a little more expensive, but it definitely has a place. So I'm gonna go through each one of these individually and talk about when I use them, how they work, and which one works the best for different places. Okay, we're gonna start with Model Magic Clay. This is the most affordable. You can pick up these little packets usually for a dollar at the store. Um, you can buy them in bigger packages, of course, but I like these little ones because it makes it easier to keep them from drying out. So I've got one open here. I only ever buy this in white because I end up painting it, but you can get it different colors. So here's the beauty part about Model Magic. It is light, fluffy, it is like a marshmallow. It's super stretchy and lightweight. This weighs almost nothing. It forms really nicely. It's kind of bouncy. It's, it's very, very lightweight. Also, the best part about this is it sticks to itself. You push it, it sticks. You see how nicely that sticks? So if you're doing something where you have a lot of little pieces that you wanna to stick together, this is the clay that I like to use. The other reason I would use this is if it's something that is very flexible and I want it to remain flexible after drying, it's gonna give a little bit of give if you want a little bit of give. I use this clay on things like, on my, on my Turkey Monica when I did this, this little lobster. I used Model Magic for this lobster because these little tiny legs were so easy to just stick on. Um, I also used it for this frame because it was really nice and easy. And since this was going to stick out, I wanted it to have a little bit of give. See how that bends just a little bit? So this is nice if you want a flexible piece for whatever reason. I'll show you how easy it is to stick. Like if you were doing the lobster, it just sticks right on. You're gonna see these other clays don't necessarily do that and it will dry stuck on there. But you can also, shape it back into a nice smooth shape. It does roll really nicely. As far as water goes, you can take a little bit of water and smooth it. It is water soluble, so you can get a nice extra smooth surface if you need. Or if it gets a little bit dry, you can actually mix some water in. Not too dry, it's not, if it's totally dry, it's not gonna work. But you can mix a little bit of water in and sort of reconstitute it and get it back to that extra squishy shape. Okay, so Model Magic. Now, the downside of Model Magic is you don't want to use it on a big shape that is completely surrounded. So for example, this is the very first Turkey Monica that I made. I actually made a few later, but the reason this was a problem, if you see here, I completely encased her head and then I added these legs on and when it dried, it cracked. So there's a little crack mark here, there's a crack mark here. Because it shrinks when it dries, of course, and because the head was inside, it didn't have anywhere to go, so it had no choice but to split. So going forward, you would not want to use Model Magic on something that's completely enclosed like this because it would probably split. The other good thing about Model Magic, it does not make a mess on your hands. We've talked about how it sticks to itself. Let's talk about how it sticks to the figurines. This is just a broken one that we're gonna use for testing today. If I push this on here, it does not at all stick to a figurine. If I wanted to try to create a custom piece on here and blend it into the piece, it does not stick at all. So you definitely need to keep this in mind. This is for adding things on later that you might glue on. This is for creating new pieces, little accessories. Remember when I did this, when I did these little pieces out of that, 
And actually this one, this pumpkin was made from Model Magic and I just formed it around there and stuck it on there. This hat was also made from Model Magic because I wanted that really thin line. This goes really thin really easily. You can really squish it down to be really thin and flexible and that's what I really wanted for this hat. So I did use Model Magic for this. Another thing you really need to keep in mind with Model Magic is you definitely need to seal it. It has a tendency to deteriorate over time. So anytime you use it on a piece, you wanna put a nice sealer on there for sure to protect it. This is the sealer that I use, Americana Decor Light Satin Varnish. I really like this finish. That is what you see here. It's got this very subtle sheen to it. It just makes everything kind of match and look really nice. I really like this texture. Now I wanna show you how I cut and form this clay as needed. Here are some of the tools that I use all the time. It does roll out nicely. It will roll to be nice and smooth. So sometimes I use a cuticle stick. Um, you can poke holes in it very easily. You can put texture in it, kind of, but you see how, because it's got this rubbery um, finish, it sort of bounces back and doesn't let you really carve texture into that. It sort of comes apart. So carving is not great for this. What does work great is cutting, actually. You can cut this no problem if you need a bunch of if you want a fringe if you want a skinny piece you can cut this really well you can also use a craft knife to cut it that works pretty well also so and again i can form this right back into a solid piece so it's a very forgiving clay again very lightweight it's a great starter clay because it is affordable. It is just not necessarily the best long lasting clay to use. All right, let's move on to my next one. This is the Sculpey Air Dry Clay, the regular. This is a much heavier clay. This weighs probably three times as much as that big Model Magic that I had. It is a very nice, squishy, pasty clay. It's very um, sort of satisf satisfying to squish it. It does have a rougher texture. When you break it, it's got this, this sort of rough, grainy texture to it, whereas the Model Magic was smooth and rubbery. This is more pasty and a little bit grainy, but it forms really, really well. You get that right back to shape, like nothing much better than the Model Magic does. It's a little bit messier. You can see there's a little bit on my hands already, and I haven't even gone in for the water. You can, of course, put water on there to thin it down, to reconstitute it. Um, I always add a little bit of water when I pull it out of the bag just to kind of get it into a nice working shape. As far as sticking to itself, this one also sticks pretty well. Um, not quite as well as the Model Magic. You see how it's coming apart? It will stick, but you kind of have to push it a little harder. What this does really well though is blend and you can just smear that right in, which is something if you remember we could not do with the Model Magic. So let's try it here on our scrap. First of all, it sticks to the piece. I, have, I can pull it off, but it does stick and it blends beautifully. So if I want to just smear this down into a nice smooth, see that I can add, if I needed to add texture or whatever, if I wanna add um, you know, a knob on here and smooth it down all the way around, this works beautifully for this. This is my go-to clay for most of my work because it's got such a great texture to it. You can also add a little bit of water and smooth it. It works great for this. Now, it is very messy. Once you start adding water, it does this, but that also means you can create a slip with this. You can actually really, really thin stuff down, fill gaps, do whatever you want to add this sort of thing to it. Texture-wise, it also works beautifully. Whereas the Model Magic did not let you Put texture in it this really really does I can give this a really nice texture to it if I want and you can pull it back off again you can wash all this back off again um, if it's something that you don't want to keep on there so that comes off no problem it does dry really rock solid hard this is not a flexible clay but that means it could also have a tendency to break it does dry really hard as far as my cutting tools here, I can roll it out again, no problem. That works really great. As far as cutting goes, it's, it's okay. It's not as good as the Model Magic, but you can cut it. If it's wet, obviously it's not going to cut as well. And you can use the knife also, a little bit rougher surface. You can poke holes in it. 
this clay takes texturing really, really well because every little bit will move. It does not bounce back when you hit it. If you want to create hair or fur or grass or anything like that with texture, this works really beautifully for that with a cuticle stick or even with a toothpick, anything that you want to put some texture on there. And also, again, you can take the water and if you have this texture that you don't want, you can smooth this out so nicely. It's so forgiving and it will dry nice and smooth just like you left it. And this is definitely the workhorse of my my work. I love the way that it works. Anytime I want to create anything that I'm adding to a piece such as Indiana Jones's hat or this is the clay that I used for my Travis and Taylor piece a lot. The entire helmet was made out of this clay. The guitar was made out of this clay. This is definitely my workhorse clay, my go-to. It is also the most affordable. It's more affordable than the other Sculpey that I'm going to show you in a minute. So yes, this is it. Sculpey Air Dry, very satisfying workhorse clay. I love it. Okay, this clay is my Sculpey Air Dry Porcelain. And this has a very different texture than the other one. This is like sort of the texture of chewing gum. And when you pull it across, you can see that it stretches into these points. This is very, very different. It's not grainy at all. It's smooth, plasticky, sticky, very sticky, sort of a silly putty almost. It does absorb water really well. I can put some on there, reconstitute it and soften it up. It does not really go down to a slip level like the regular Sculpey does. But what's so great about this one is it dries really, really hard and not porous. This will give you a porcelain plastic-like finish, um, whereas the regular Sculpey is more of a sanded finish. This is really, really hard. Now, as far as sticking to itself, it sticks great. It does, it's very similar to the other one. It sticks and you can pull it apart. Um, blending. Let's grab our piece here and look at blending. This blends really well also. You can squish this down onto a piece and form things. However, you can see as I'm pulling it, it's so goopy and sticky that it's a little hard to create nice sharp lines if you want a sharp line. It does do really well though, sticking to the piece blends right in. You can peel it off. You see how it's just a very sticky, goopy kind of clay. Now, when do I use this? I use this for things that need to be very well protected, teeny, teeny, tiny things that need that extra stability because you can make this really, really small and it doesn't always stick to the piece. You might have to glue it, but this is what you use to make really, really tiny pieces or large pieces that actually need the stability of the hard surface. You remember on this one, I used the Model Magic first. When I redid them later, I actually used the porcelain finish on this. It does not crack and it does much better over a, an enclosed surface like this. It does shrink quite a bit though, so you have to be very prepared for this to shrink. The regular Sculpey Air Dry shrinks a little bit, but this shrinks a lot. As far as rolling it out, it's very easy to get a nice smooth surface. Let's try it again with our tools. It rolls nicely. And again, you can get this really thin because of this texture. The scissors work pretty well on this. If you need to cut a fringe, it gives you a nice surface there. And the knife, it's a little, it's a little stretchy. You see how it, because it's this, just such a stretchy clay, it, it doesn't work great for that. In terms of texturing this, it's not as good as the regular Sculpey, but it is better than the Model Magic. You can get a little texture in there. It's going to be very um, pointy and sticky though again. So you see kind of it's a rough surface, but if you want a rough surface, if you're doing like maybe a really rough fur, this might work because those pieces are going to dry hard and they're gonna stay like that and they're not gonna snap off. This will dry really hard. Smoothing it back out with water. Works pretty well, not quite as well as the regular Sculpey, but you can smooth that back down if you need to. And of course, you can just knead it back together and get it back to that really nice consistency. This is the most expensive of the three clays. It is probably two to three times the regular Sculpey, so I try to save this for things that really need it because it is significantly more expensive, but it does provide a nice high quality finish. In terms of messiness, you do get a little bit on your hands. It's not as bad as the regular Sculpey, um, 
the real risk is if you're working with this and you're trying to go on a piece, you don't want to touch the piece and get the clay on the piece. So that's where the, the messiness really comes into play. One thing you definitely need to keep in mind with all of these clays, because they are air dry, you need to wrap them really, really well when you're not using them. Plastic wrap, plastic bag, really pack them tight. While I'm wrapping this up, please go ahead and give a like to this video and subscribe if you're not already. So that's how the clays are when you're working with them wet. But now I wanna show you some examples of what they're like dry. So I've gone and made some pieces ahead of time from all three clays so that I can show you the differences when they're dry. Okay, here are my examples. I have done these different pieces in different shapes and sizes with Model Magic, the Sculpey Regular, and the Sculpey Porcelain. So let's take a look at each one and see how the different clays perform when they're dry. These have been drying for a couple of weeks now. Let's start with this large piece because this shows the most what we've got here. This is the Model Magic. There is actually a golf ball inside of here. I wanted to test how well this worked when it is over something tight. This is the Model Magic. Um, it is, again, bounceable. It's got that slightly squishy, flexible feel that I told you about. I can actually dent this a little bit with my finger. It's very flexible. This did not crack, even though, as you recall, the turkey head did crack when it was spread over a piece. This did not crack. I think it's because I rolled it really, really well and there were no seams. The main reason that this cracked is because there were seams. So if you use the Model Magic and you get a really nice smooth surface, you'll be okay. The texture here too, when it's dry, it's very soft and silky feeling. It's got a little bit of texture. It's completely matte, but it's silky smooth, sort of like an eggshell actually. That's what it feels a lot like. So that's the texture that you're going to get with that. Now this is the Sculpey Regular. This is significantly heavier because it is a heavier bodied clay. It did crack a little bit right here, which kind of surprised me. Um, this one has a dusty, sandy feel. It is not flexible at all. This is hard as a rock. I cannot squish this. I feel really secure about this not going anywhere. Um, it has a very matte, smooth finish. If you look at the color difference, it is whiter than the Model Magic, so it, it retained that true white color. Then we have the Sculpey Porcelain. This is significantly different. Look at the color variation here. This is very dark, um, and it's also smaller. These were the same size when they started. This shrunk quite a bit, so this is quite a bit smaller. It is also rock hard. This is not going anywhere. The texture, very smooth, matte also, but not dusty at all. Got a very hard, rock hard finish. Again, comparing these two, this one is dusty and matte and feels like it could be sanded. This one is smoother and hard, but still sort of like an eggshell finish. Now let's look at a smaller circle with each one just to see. This does not have anything inside of it. I can I can actually squeeze this and squish it. And it's bouncing back, but you see how the Model Magic is this really, it definitely has some give. So if you're looking for a piece with give for whatever reason, this is the one to use. The Sculpey Regular, hard as a rock. So this is not going anywhere. This is a good solid piece. Again, there's no golf ball inside of this smaller one. And then here's the Sculpey Porcelain. Look how tiny that is. Again, these were all the same size but you can see how much that shrunk and the difference in the color. The truest white from the Sculpey, the Model Magic a little bit off-white, and this significantly off-white. All right, I also did a little square piece so that I can show the, what a flat thing does. I can bend this. It bends back. This is the Model Magic, very flexible and bendy. The Sculpey Regular, it's not bending. Should we try to break it? It's not, it's not breaking. So. That, that is a nice hard finish. The Sculpey Porcelain with this little piece, also not breaking. It does have a little bit of a translucency to it though. When you get thin like this, um, compare it to that one. You can sort of almost see through it a little bit. So if this were really, really thin, it would be quite translucent. All right, and then I did a squiggly shape with each one because I wanted to be able to test the flexibility. So this is the Model Magic, very, very flexible, right? probably could break it off too if I pulled. Yes, very fragile, but flexible. So when it's thin like this, you have to be very careful because it will break. Here's the Sculpey Regular. Nope, no flexibility at all to this one. Not at all. Let's see if we can snap it. It does snap, it took some more pressure, but it will snap off. But again, no flexibility to this. Now the Sculpey Porcelain, 
no zero flexibility. It's even firmer than the Sculpey Regular and I really can't break it. It actually bent before, oh there, I finally got it to break, but much, much harder. So that's why I use this for anything really tiny and detailed that I need to really protect and I don't want to break. This is the strongest one. One last thing, I tried testing a really thin piece just to see sort of a toothpick shape, how that would come out. By the way, the weight of this, I can't even tell it's on my hand. This is the Model Magic, super flexible, broke right in half. The Sculpey Regular, also very lightweight. A little bit of give, it's probably gonna snap, imme yeah, broke immediately. And the Sculpey Porcelain. One thing I wanna show you too before I get this, when you roll this out, the Sculpey Porcelain does have a tendency to dry slightly unevenly. This was a smooth cane when I started, but it dried a little bit wonky. Um, let's see if we can bend it. Oh, it actually bends, but I think it will probably, I can probably snap it just like I did with that little one. So the Sculpey gives you a little bit of flexibility, which this actually surprises me a little bit. You get a little bit of flexibility from this porcelain one, but if it's a really tiny, look at the point on that, that tiny, tiny point that I was able to get with that. You, you can't get that with these others and have any sort of flexibility with it. Okay, so now we have these pieces. I wanna show you what you can do in terms of repairing them after. You can actually sand or trim some of these. So let's start with the Model Magic. This is a little sandpaper thing that I have. It's really handy. It's great for getting into small surfaces. I also sometimes use just um, an emery board. That works great. So let's see if we can sand this. It did, it sanded a little bit, not much. It really sort of just kind of pushed it around. Um, this is not a good sanding clay. If you use a Model Magic and you wanna shape it, I think scissors are probably the way to go. Remember, this is a very light, foamy kind of clay, so cutting it actually works a lot better than sanding it. It just does not go to dust, so sanding is not the way to go with that one. Sculpey Regular, however, is a sanding dream. I do this all the time whenever I need to smooth out surfaces, so we can hit this, flattens right out, goes to a perfectly smooth shape, the emery board as well. You can really get that nice smooth surface that you want. This is a very, um, this is not a very harsh sandpaper, so I'm only grinding a little bit of it here, but you can see how you can get that nice, really nice smooth surface on there. In terms of cutting this, yeah, it just chips. Scissors are not the way to go with this one. Definitely sanding is the better approach. Now with our Sculpey Porcelain, this also sands pretty well too, but it takes significantly more effort to do it, but you can sand that shape down. So if you have something that Remember I told you it dries kind of irregularly sometimes. You can sort of sand it down and get that smooth shape in there and that works pretty well. The scissors, that's a huge chip. You can't, you really can't cut this with scissors. Sanding is the way to go. Again, this is so rock hard that really that's what you need if you want to do that. In terms of adding water back to something later, again, this is the Model Magic that's really soft. If we wanted to add a little water to try to smooth something, it just sort of goes on and goes away. It does not absorb into it. Once this is dry, it's dry. That's pretty much it. The porcelain is the same way. Once you put, once you put water on there, it's not really gonna change. It just gets wet and then it dries off. The regular Sculpey, however, you can actually move stuff around with water. You can get that smooth surface again. You can create a slip and look, it's starting to See that it's starting to actually reconstitute again and turn back into a paste. So you can go back and re-smooth your surfaces. Again, that's why I really like to use this Sculpey Regular for most of my things. Look at that nice smooth edge that I got there just by a little sanding and then some smoothing with water. So this gives you a really nice smooth surface. I wanna show you how these different clays take paint when they're dry. I'm just gonna use this Americana multi-surface. This is the paint that I usually use. It gives a really nice satin finish and I really love it. it. Comes in a ton of colors. So let's see how the Model Magic takes paint when it's dry beautifully. See how that goes right on there. Um, it absorbs a little bit, gives you a nice, nice pretty coating on there. Takes paint really well. The Sculpey Regular, because it's such a porous surface, it really takes paint well. It absorbs it right in there. You will use fewer coats with this than you will with any other clay. I can actually show you the difference 
Um, the first one has, might need a second coat on this one, but this one looks really good with that coat on there. The Sculpey Porcelain, if you recall, has that really glossy thing to it, and this does not take paint as well. You can see already that that is not absorbing in there. Look at the difference between that and the regular Sculpey. This, this type of clay, when you use this, may take three or four coats of paint because the paint just sits on top of it. This one, it absorbs down into it. So here they are again with one coat on each one, and you can see the difference in the paint makes. I do occasionally paint the Model Magic while it's still wet. If I'm in a real hurry, I could also paint the regular Sculpey while it's still wet, although I try not to, but definitely do not paint this one while it's wet um, or it's never going to dry. So you definitely need to wait for that one to dry thoroughly. As you can see, that is three very different clays that I use for three very different reasons, depending on the piece that I'm doing. So just to recap, the Model Magic I use the least often, and I reach for that when I have a really small detailed piece that I need where I really need something to stick to itself and I can protect it really well from varnish to protect against breaking later. The Sculpey Porcelain is the one that I use the next most often, and that one is specifically for things where I need a really hard finish, really fine detail, a plasticky finish, or if I'm doing something that's going to be really large and I don't want it to crack. But remember, that one shrinks quite a bit, so you have to plan ahead of time on that one to make sure that your piece is going to stay the, sa the size that you want it. Sculpey, Air Dry Regular, that's the one that I use the most. That's my workhorse. It sticks to the figurines the best, it sticks to itself the best, it's sandable, it takes paint the best, and it's the most affordable. So that's the one that I use the most, but it does not give you that super duper smooth surface that the porcelain does. So sometimes you have to go for the porcelain. It depends on the piece that you're doing. I hope that helped you guys understand the different clays that I use, and I hope you got some good tips out of there in terms of working with it, finishing it, sanding it, painting it, all that good stuff. I will put links below to the clays that we use so that you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Thank you so much for watching. We've got so many more Altered Precious Moments coming, so make sure you stay tuned so that you can see all of the new stuff that we're doing. And if you are altering Precious Moments, we would love to hear from you. Please join our Facebook group. I'll put a link below to that. We have so many people there now creating Altered Precious Moments. It's such a fun community, and we hope that you'll join. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.